which pads are the best for machine polishing or paint correction. You're about to find out by watching this video. So what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So in this part four of four videos on compounds, polishes, all in ones and one steps, and lastly but not least, the pad selection, we're talking about paint correction and machine polishing. What is that? Are pads truly that important? And is there such a thing as only one pad rules them all? Well, we're going to talk about that again in this video. By the way, don't worry, I'll leave the links to all the products that I'm talking about in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Also, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just sharing my thoughts, my experience, uh, and my choices, and I'm passing them on to you guys. And I want you to participate also in the comment section under the video. If you tested one of these pads and you either like them or dislike them, let us know. Give us feedback. There's a lot of people who do in-depth uh, testing out there as well and uh, you guys might want to share your experience let us know some background information as well what type of paint you were working on what level of defect removal were you trying to achieve did it work did it not work and if I'm also missing a few brands or products that you think I should look into let us know drop a comment in the comment section I'm always on the hunt for the next greatest thing and uh, I like to have my viewers feedback and also it's great for the community to share in the comment section positively of course in a positive way be respect, respectful in the comments to others uh, to kind of figure out what works for you. Now, uh, one thing that's very important when we're talking about paint correction or machine polishing, we're talking about defect removal and to improve the gloss, the clarity, uh, the appearance, the pop of the paint as well, right? So by defect removal, we're talking removing oxidation, that light veil or kind of uh, milky appearance that comes with the exposure to UV rays and elements. We all know those red cars that over years, if they're unprotected, they turn unprotected. Uh, they turn kind of that pink tone. Well, that's due to oxidation. So that milky white appearance that changes the color of the vehicle and also acts like a veil preventing proper light reflection. Uh, defect removal, we're also talking about some swirls, some scratches either on a deep level, so you use a compound and then a polish, or if you only have some light swirls and scratches or little to no oxidation, perhaps just a polishing step is needed with the finer abrasives. So when we're talking about polishing compounds, the liquids themselves, which I covered in the first video and second video for compounds and polishes, uh, we're basically splitting the polishing compounds into two categories. So the compounds. Those are the heavier or bigger abrasives to remove the heavier swirls, deeper scratches, the heavy oxidation. And the second category is the polishes. So polishes are abrasive liquids, but they contain smaller abrasives and they're there to remove uh, any of the sanding marks left by the compound stage. They're there to further refine the surface, so to improve the gloss and the clarity and uh, to remove potentially some haze marks or if you only have some light swirls and scratches and you only need light uh, defect removal, you can use just a polishing. Sometimes polishing step, you don't need to start with a compound. Uh, but if you do start with a compound for the heavier defects, you have to follow up with a polishing step to further refine that surface. Kind of the principle of when you're doing uh, water sanding you're going to start with a heavier grit and gradually move up to finer and finer grits to refine that surface, increase the depth and clarity and gloss and all that kind of stuff right on the paint or on the surface you're working with. Uh, also, it is to be noted that paint correction or machine polishing is the best way to increase or improve gloss on a measurable amount with a gloss meter on paintwork, right? So we all think that, well, many people, I should say, think that carnauba waxes, paint sealants, or ceramic coatings, that's the way to add gloss to paint, right? So all Although paint protectants like those do bump up the gloss units sometimes um, or at least visually impact to make a better appearing vehicle or make it appear as it's more glossy or candy-like in appearance, uh, the actual best way or the highest measurable difference or impact in gloss units is by machine polishing or paint correction. Why is that? I covered that in the previous video uh, videos, but if you haven't seen that, let me go over it once again. Uh, so the uh, paint correction, what it does, it levels the surface and you're also removing the defects. So if we're looking on the defect removal side, when paint has scratches and swirls, if you were to look at it from a microscope perspective, those are hills and valleys, right? So by having a lot of those deep etchings through the clear coat, what you're doing is you're spreading the light or you're scattering the light. So because the light isn't reflecting as nicely or as evenly, you're not getting that best gloss. 
blocks all, or if it's hidden by a veil of oxidation, well, that again prevents light from properly reflecting. So when you're paint correcting or machine polishing, you're leveling that surface. So you're removing a bit of that top clear coat portion to remove the defects, to flatten the surface and make it truer. And that way you're getting better or even light reflection and dispersion. And that's how you have an increased gloss. You're increasing depth and clarity as well because you're removing all those defects and those scratches and that hazing. And you're basically allowing optically to see through that clear coat to see the base coat, which is the color coat. Because don't forget on modern paints, on top of the metal, which is the substrate, you get a three-part system for the paint. So you get the primer, then you get the base coat, which is the color coat, and on top you get the clear coat. That's the clear, shiny, protective layer that also contains the UV blockers inside there to protect the paint against the sun's UV rays. So those paints on modern vehicles are getting thinner and thinner. Overall, we're only talking about four to six mils on average uh, when you're using a paint depth gauge, so you're not working with a lot of material. So we also, when we're doing paint correction, want to preserve as much clear coat as possible. You're gonna hear a lot of professionals talk about that and it's important because again, your clear coat contains those UV blockers, but those UV blockers usually migrate or tend to hang out towards the top of the clear coat portion. So the more polishing you're doing, especially the heavy cutting, you're chopping off a bit of that top portion of the clear coat and eventually you're either gonna run through the clear coat, burn through it if you're polishing too much, uh, or you're gonna remove that protective layer. So it's important to preserve as much clear coat as possible, hence why we don't necessarily chase 100% paint correction. In which cases would we chase, chase absolute perfection? In some rare instances, if you're entering a Concours d'Elegance at a Pebble Beach competition, for example, if you have a rare vintage vehicle or a rare hypercar that you're exposing in a museum or that is gonna be a garage queen or garage kept all the time, not really exposed to the elements, perhaps in that case, if you also have the budget or if you have the time, if you're a DIYer or the budget, if you're a customer, or if you're a professional, if your customer has the budget to do so, that's when maybe you chase 100%. But typically on daily driven vehicles, what you want is anywhere from, I don't know, 70, 85% correction if you were looking only at a light paint enhancement. If you're looking at a two stage, perhaps 80 to 90%, a uh, full three stage, so compound, medium polish, and jeweling or finishing polish, that's the three step. You're gonna look at maybe 90 to 95 correction. I wouldn't push it really beyond that because you wanna preserve, again, remember that clear coat, it, will, it doesn't last forever, right? Over the years, it diminishes and the performance of the UV inhibitors also diminish. So if you're always chopping off a bit of that top portion of the clear coat and you're over correcting, over polishing, well, eventually you're gonna burn through the clear coat and you don't want that. So preserve as much clear coat as possible. Now by burning, don't worry. If you're only doing a few polishes in your car's lifetime, you're not gonna burn through the clear coat, guys, especially if it's in good condition and you had the vehicle brand new and you're aware that it hasn't been uh, accident damaged or repainted. If it's the OEM surface, you have enough material on there to do many polishes safely modern machines also, uh, you're not gonna burn through the clear. You're not, pre you'd have to press down. I, I remember seeing a video from the RAG company. They did some tests with rotary and dual action. And I think they had to put pressure on the same spot, not moving the machine for 10 to 12 minutes before they burned through the clear coat. So nobody would do that, right? Uh, keep steady, slow arm speed when you're polishing. Light pressure, you don't want any heavy pressure. Let the machine do the work along with the pad and the polishing compound. Let all of that work for you. If you're sweating after a polishing job, you're not doing it correctly, let this stuff do the work for you. Don't apply too much force, you don't need that. Uh, and if you apply too much force, for example, on a DA, you're gonna be stalling the pad anyway, and you want that pad to continue spinning, free spinning. So light pressure, little to no pressure, 10 to 15 pounds is what they usually say. Basically the weight of the machine and the pad and let the chemical do its thing and that is it. Uh, so yeah, we're looking to preserve the clear coat. Of course, always adjust your customer's expectations to their budget, what they want and have a discussion with them to what they expect the end result will be. Sometimes they only have the budget for a light um, one step or a light paint enhancement or other times they have the budget for a full two step or three step. It really depends. You have to have the conversation. And if you're a DIYer, what it all depends on what level of finish you want. So we spoke about the compounds in the first video, the polishes in the second video. In the third video, we spoke about all-in-ones. So those are the polishes that also contain a bit of protection in there. So like you're doing two things at once, you're correcting the paint, masking defects, and also adding a bit of protection. And in that third video, we also talked about the one steps. So um, no protection in the polishes, but that they can both remove a little bit of defects in a single step, right? So you're not doing both the compound and the polish, you're only doing a light polish. 
And in this fourth video, today we're talking about the pads. The pads are also an essential component of the paint correction system because that's what applies the friction, right, to the polishing compound on the surface and that's what spins and gets you working efficiently. So um, a quick few pro tips. When you're working with pads, you want to work cleanly. I've said that in the previous videos and you're going to hear that in many professional videos out there uh, from other detailing channels or detailing professionals is to work cleanly. What does that mean? Well, when your pad is spinning, when it's working and you're having that polishing compound on it, well, they have oils inside. There are lubricating agents and a bunch of different chemicals that can clog up the pores uh, over time. So the longer you're working, the more those pores get clogged up. When your pores get clogged up, you get less cutting efficiency or ability. So you're going to switch out your pads. So for a typical average size cars, you're going to see me use four, five, or six pads for the compound stage, four, five, or six pads for the polishing stage. I like to change to fresh pads. That way you're not working with clogged pores, so you're increasing your cutting speed and ability as well. Uh, also, in between sections or in between passes even, before you switch your pads, you should clean your pads often. So for example, if you have an air compressor, you can use a uh, air blowout tool like a Tornador to blow out the pads and the rest residue. Uh, you can use um, a pad brush to brush the pads, especially if they're microfiber or a wool pad. You can use that to brush off while it's spinning. You set the pad on there and it's going to clean the pad. You can use a pad washer like the Lake Country System 4000, basically a bucket with cleaning solution in there. There's a pump system on top. You put your pad with the machine. You do a few pumps on the system. It's going to inject cleaning liquid inside the pad. You're going to brush it or spin it on that pump. It's going to flush out all the residue and then you lift it off. Off, you free spin it in the machine, it's going to air dry and you're good to go, right? It's going to be just lightly damp and that's totally fine to continue polishing. Or there are some other um, uh, polishing cleaning steps, oh, pad polishing pad cleaning steps. I have a video on that, by the way. Uh, I'll leave all of those linked, right? A tutorial on paint correction um, for beginners. I'm going to leave videos on the best compounds, the best polishes, the best all-in-ones and one steps, uh, and basically all that stuff, including how to clean your pads as well. If you want to check that out, check the description under the video and you can watch those videos after this one. So the purpose today is basically I'm going to share uh, what good pads I've been working with over the years. I sometimes change things as time goes uh, because there are always new brands, new companies, new technologies coming out there, uh, new arrivals in the market as well. Uh, there's a few of the brands that produce their own polishing compounds and the pads so you can often get systems. If you're unsure of which pad or product you should get and you're just starting off, perhaps get a system. For example, Rupes, they have, they make their own machines, they make their pads, they make their polishing compounds and they have a color code. So for example, if you get the blue bottle, which is a coarse uh, compound, so that's the compound liquid, you can get one of their blue pads. So for example, if I look at their microfiber, you're going to see this is their matching DA coarse extreme cut pad, right? See, it's blue. So this would be the for the compound stage. So it removes all the guesswork and usually they work the pad technology with their polishing compounds together so you can be or rest assured that you have a good starting point. Now, another thing I want to mention, there is no such thing as one best compound and one best polish for all situations. If somebody tells you that, they are lying or they don't know what they're talking about. Um, because there are different paint types and different desired outputs or conditions or levels of paint correction that you're looking for. There are uh, soft paints, there are medium paints, there are hard paints out there. Uh, the same car manufacturer, even in the same uh, production year for the same model, sometimes they can change paint suppliers. And so you can go from a hard clear coat all of a sudden to a soft clear coat. So that's why you have to do test spots. You're going to hear that often in videos. And those are the guys I think that get it right is the ones who recommend that you do test spots. So take your hood or a flat panel. Uh, and then you have in your head what desired outcome you want of defect removal, right? So you can test a specific compound with a pad, look at the result. Move to another section, do another compound with the same pad, look at the result. Move to another section, now you're going to change the pad this time with the same initial compound. Basically, you're looking for which combination of both compound or polish and which pad will work best for your desired outcome and level of desired finish on the specific paint you're looking for. So you have to do test spots to figure out. That's also why you never only have one polish and one compound in your arsenal. You always have multiple polishes, multiple compounds to be able to play around with different combos so you can find the ultimate one for you. I recommend that you start off with the small bottles, typically eight ounces or 200 some something mils, 237 mils, I think. 
Um, so they're less expensive. It allows you to test out a few. And then once you find the ones that work for your conditions and uh, the ones you're comfortable in using, then you can buy the bigger sizes and save on volume because the bigger sizes are more economical, right? But start off with the small bottles, figure out what works for you, so on and so forth. The same goes for the pads. You're going to see behind me, I have a plethora of different pads from different companies. Don't forget, you have wool pads, you have microfiber pads, you have foam pads, you have different types of foam, microfiber, wool. You have either, uh, you also have now hybrid pads, you have different blends of microfibers and microfiber pads. It's getting very, very complex. So again, just have fun with it. Test it out and see your desire, desired level of output. Now today, I'm going to share the ones that work for me, uh, but they might not all necessarily work for you, right? And this, the opposite is also true. I have many professional detailers out there that often recommend that I use stuff. I try them out and you know what? It just doesn't do it for me in my conditions or for my preference. And that's totally fine. That's why I like testing to figure out what works for me. And you should also test a few that work for you. But uh, rest assured, these are all quality pads from quality brands. These are reputable brands. There's no BS in here. Um, so you're at, you'll at least get a very, very good lineup regardless of which one you purchase here. Just do a few tests again and figure out the ones that work uh, best for you. So we're going to go in order um, in no necessary, uh, in no real order of performance. I just rank them uh, from less expensive to most expensive. And uh, yeah, we're going to go over them right now. By the way, if you had any experience again with any one of these, positive or negative, let us know which one and why in the comment section. And if there's anyone that I'm missing, from a specific brand. Let me know what brand and model I should be looking out to for pads. Leave a comment in the comment section. So the less expensive of the bunch and from a brand that, um, well, they don't have to talk about their reputation anymore because their reputation is absolutely amazing. They've been making some for years. I Even in my decades ago when I started out, Lake Country was a part of it. So this is the Lake Country CCS foam pads. This is their uh, latest versions. And you see here, I have a bunch of colors. First of all, uh, they're the less expensive in the bunch. They're like $7.99 USD for five and a half inch. They make, of course, small, medium, big pads. It depends which backing plate size, right? If you have a polisher with a uh, five inch backing plate, you're going to use a five inch pad. If you have a six inch backing plate, six inch pad. If you have a three inch backing plate, three inch pad, so on and so forth. So you match the pad size to your backing plate size. Uh, so the, this CCS, again, $7.99 USD for a five and a half inch. Uh, slow rate polish absorption. So the pockets that are in there, if we look at this from the front, you see those dimples? Those pockets gradually release the polish as needed. They call those CCS, closed cell phone pockets. They prevent pad skipping also because they, re they reduce surface tension. So I like the technology behind them. They're sturdy, they last a long time, and they have different cutting levels. Now, you're gonna see colors here. They don't necessarily apply to all the brands because every brand, unfortunately, unfortunately, has their own color codes. So a yellow cutting pad in one might be a finishing pad in another company, so don't only look at colors. All these brands on their website, they have a scale and they tell you which one is the heaviest cut to the finishing one. So in the case of the uh, CCS foam pads from Lake Country, the yellow is the heaviest cut, medium cut is the orange, uh, medium to light polish is the green, light polish, finishing polish, and then simply finishing for um, like sealants and uh, liquid waxes and that kind of stuff. This really has no cut to the gray one. So from most cut to less amount of cut, these are their pads. There are pretty much all the pads in this video are now hook and loop, which means they have kind of this Velcro backing and they stick to your backing plate of your machine polisher, which also pretty much all of them today have the hook and loop system. So I see it like Velcro again, like these little hooks and loops. So they're securely attached. So uh, again, great value for money from Lake Country. They still kick butt. So the next one on the list, this is the CarPro Gloss Pad. Uh, this one is slightly used, so it's a bit more yellow now, but it comes out white initially. 989 USD for a five and a half inch. And if we look in the back, so this is their Gloss Pad. Japanese open cell polyurethane design, and this is for finishing to a high gloss finish. This has uh, little to no cut. Uh, this is especially fantastic with the um, uh, CarPro all-in-ones, which is the Essence. So Essence is made as a primer and high gloss uh, kind of filler, if you want, and gloss enhancer before you apply their C-Quartz uh, UK 3.0 coating. So this is a great pad with the Essence polish because uh, it has no cut. It's just there really to enhance gloss, little to no cut, super soft and uh, very thick so it contours well and also will spread out the force and energy and has kind of this foam backing there to keep a bit of that rigidity. So a great, great pad for specific uses. Next up from Rupez uh, out of Italy, this is their latest generation of their uh, DA 
system of foam pads. So you're going to see the, we have the blue, which is their coarse. We have the yellow, which is their polishing and their ultra fine or softest white pad. And you can see these are the new gen because they're a bit beveled and they have this edge here for better contour and less skipping. And they have these open cells. So they're foam pads. And as you look in the back, so the blue one is their DA course. This is their compound pad. Their yellow one, this is their fine polish if you want. And their white one is their DA Ultra Fine. So they're specifically made for DA or dual action or random orbital polishers, however you want to call them. And these ones for value, they're at $10.49 uh, US for five inch pads or 130 mil, uh, millimeter. So again, uh, great value for money. I specifically like the yellow one. You guys see me use this awesome uh, often uh, for one steps with Sonax Perfect Finish. This pad works really, really well, but uh, the entire line of these uh, new gen foam pads from Rupez work super well. Uh, another one of my favorite pads as well, this one here is the Buff and Shine Eurofiber Cutting Pad, 1095 USD for a five inch. It blends, if you look here in the front, two different types of microfibers to allow to cut, polish, and finish. It's a lower pile compared to traditional uh, microfiber pads. So if you look here from the profile view, you see how thin that is. And it's just kind of a hybrid pad where it cuts and finishes well. Uh, the uh, favorite polishing compound that I like with this as a combo is 3D1. Again, you've seen me use that in videos. It's a fantastic one step because it cuts well cuts enough, I should say, but finishes quite well for a uh, polishing compound. So a one step does it all. You don't necessarily have to finish um, with, a, um, with a finishing polish, except for those super soft paints that I would still recommend a second step. But normally just 3D1, one step, you take this with the uh, fiber pad. I have to give credit where credit is due. This is Brian from Apex uh, Detail Channel that introduced me to this. He's a professional detailer out of Pennsylvania, USA. He absolutely loves the Eurofiber from Buff and Shine. Uh, I met uh, Jason Lobato at SEMA, so uh, he's one of the brand representatives over at Buff and Shine, tremendous pro detailer, uh, hats off to you. And uh, yeah, these are very, very good. Their engineer is amazing as well, as well over at Buff and Shine. Uh, the next one, new brand that has been out for a little over a year now. My friend uh, Ivan LaCroix and uh, his partner Nick McGurk, two professional detailers, started DIY Detail. Fantastic products, but they also have pretty good polishing pads. This one here is the DIY Detail Gold Standard Waffle Pad. Why? Because if you look at the dimples, this has kind of a waffle texture. So we're looking at 1099 USD for a five and a half inch. And uh, this one here runs a bit cooler than other flat foam pads because of those dimples. So those air pockets, they prevent heat buildup and a great price. And like anything they have works great in their system. They only have one, what they call hybrid compound polish. It's their spray version. So you'd start spinning at low speed on your polisher one spray, it spreads out perfectly and you're ready to start uh, compounding or polishing depending on which pad you're using. So this is their finishing pad. They have another one that will come up later on for cutting and I'll get to that in just a bit. In just a bit. The next one up, another company that knows pads and polishes quite well, Oberk. This is the Oberk Yellow Medium Cutting Pad, 1099 USD uh, for a five inch pad. And uh, this one here I like as a one-step with the Oberk um, one-step medium polish. So their yellow bottled polish, it's called Soul, S-O-L-E. This is the great partner for that and a fantastic one-step, good bang for buck. Uh, again, quality pads, quality guy. The owner is amazing, met him at an event in Chicago and he's uh, super kind, very passionate about polishing and he goes through extensive testing uh, before releasing any of those polishing compounds or pads. So uh, he can be proud of what he has put out as well. And uh, so next one, this is a staple in the industry because it's been out for over a decade. So this one here, if you look at the logo in the back, you guys probably guessed it by now. This is from Meguiar's. So this is the DA microfiber cutting pad. They also have a finishing pad, which is a bit thicker and has the gray microfiber, uh, the gray backing. This one here has the red foam cells and the microfiber up front. So this is their cutting disc for the compound that you can also use with their DA uh, correction compound fluid. So it's kind of a system. Jason Rose, when he was working over at Meguiar's over a decade ago, 
He helped develop that system and it was revolutionary because they were matching the pads along with the product and it was made specifically for use with dual action or random orbital polishers, right? So it took all the guesswork away from your mind. All you needed for the cutting stage is their DA correction compound, which was that uh, pink liquid, and you would use the uh, DA microfiber cutting disc. They also make an extra cut version now for deeper cutting, but basically it's microfiber. It works super well. Still to this day, they are relevant. And uh, Jason Rose, um, switched over to be the global training director uh, for Rupez, a company from Italy. They make crazy machines, right? Everybody knows their polishers, especially the Bigfoot series with the large throw. But they also make fantastic pads, as you saw. Uh, and they make fantastic compounds and polishes and all that good stuff. And we're going to get to their new microfiber pads because Jason Rose was a part of that. So the evolution kind of this initial thing from uh, Meguiar's that really took the world by storm uh, evolved to that latest gen, which is potentially even a bit better compared to the original Meguiar stuff, but again, still a staple. Uh, crazy good price too, $12.95 USD for five inches. Always tremendous value over at Meguiar's. So next we move to some great pads. These are made by Lake Country. This is their higher end series. These are their HDO series. So if we look at this, these are the HDO. So you have the blue one here. This is their heavy polishing, 1349 for five and a half inch. And then you have their orange light polishing pad, 1349 USD for a five and a half inch. These are designed for uh, with dual layer systems in mind. So if you look at here, you can see each pad has kind of a dual layer. So it reduces lateral and horizontal movements. It blocks heat transfer between layers of the pad. So the lower the heat, the more cutting efficiency you're getting because you're dissipating that heat. And they also have these tapered edges, if you look here, so that prevents pad rolling. So this is fantastic for curved and contoured panels. So again, these are amazing from Lake Country HDO. They're top of the range and the price reflects that. Uh, $13.49 for each, a bit more expensive, almost double the price compared to their CCS. Uh, but these are top notch. They will last you a long time. If you care for your pads, they should last for years, by the way. Uh, and uh, Lake Country makes pads for a lot of companies like Turtle Wax. This one here, for example, they made for Dr. Beasley's. So I like to see brands uh, not cheaping out on their pads. They're going to the top pad manufacturers like Rupez or Dr. Beasley's in this case to create their awesome polishing pads for their systems for different brands. So I really, really like to see that. Next up. Uh, so higher up in the uh, pricing tier, but that are worth every penny. We spoke about them just a second ago. So these are the brand new Rupez DA Coarse Extreme Cut uh, Microfiber Pad and the DA Fine Polishing Microfiber Pad. So you know it's the Extreme Cut because not only is it written in the back, but this is the blue one that goes with their blue compound. So that's for the deeper cutting and heavier uh, defect removal. And we know it's the fine pad because it says in the back, the DA fine polishing pad, but this one is the yellow one. So this is to go with their yellow polish. So both of them, 1399 USD for five inches or 130 mils. And again, Jason Rose, global training director over at Rupez. He was prior at Meguiar's a decade ago developing that DA microfiber system. So he's the one that brought that magic and uh, he helped push that innovation with these new microfiber pads. So you can tell, if you look at the microfibers in the front, the one that's cutting, obviously it's a stiffer pad for you're getting more uh, transfer of energy and cutting capability on the surface uh, and a bit stiffer and lower pile microfiber and the one on the polishing one are a bit thicker, a bit looser, and it's obviously more pliable and uh, less dense foam because this is the polishing pad. But uh, yeah, I think overall, I think they perform a little better compared to the Meguiar's and at least in my tests. What do you guys think? Did you compare the cutting pads and polishing pads from the Meguiar's DA uh, system compared to the new uh, Rupez uh, coarse and fine pads, they're microfiber ones? Let me know. So yes, they are a bit more expensive, but like anything Rupez makes, top-notch quality and uh, they're going to last for a long time but the performance is absolutely there. Last but not least on the list, uh, if I turn the back again, this is from DIY Detail. This is the gold standard wool cutting pad. So if we look at the front, we call it wool because, yep, you guessed it, there you go. So it's a short napped foamed wool face. So the foam interface keeps the pad in contact with the paint, by the way. If you look here, there's that foam interface and you get very short top nap um, you get the short nap foamed wool surface here on the on the, the top. $17.99 USD for a five and a half inch. So one of the more expensive ones, but if you want a quick cut, we all know that wool cuts more. So you have in the cutting abilities usually, so not always, but generally speaking, 
wool cuts the most, then you have microfiber, and then you have foam. So this wool pad really cuts a lot. I like the way they built this top, top notch quality. And again, it's a no brainer because you can combine their waffle pad for polishing and have their wool pad for cutting. And all you need is their DA gold, uh, their, um, sorry, DIY detail gold standard polish. So the same polish that's in spray form, you can use with the polishing pad or with the cutting pad, depending if you want to polish and refine, or if you first want to start by cutting and then move on, but you still use always the same polishing fluid. So that is pretty, pretty cool. So guys, I remind you, I'll leave the links to all of these in the description under the video for you guys to check these products out. If you had experience with any one of this, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down with any one of them, as long as you're respectful, give us feedback in the comment section. I'm curious to know. And are there any specific brands and specific pads uh, that I don't have in this test that I should be looking for? Let me know. Be very specific. Tell me the brand and which specific model because each brand has a tons model, uh, very uh, many, many different models of pads. So I'd be uh, curious to know because I'm always looking to test new stuff and report uh, back to you guys with my best findings. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, four-part series. I remind you, I'll leave the links in the description to the tutorial for beginners on pain correction, a tutorial on how to clean your pads properly. And if you want to see the... Um, a series before this video. So the best compounds, the best polishes, and the best all-in-ones and one-steps. I'll leave all of those linked down below. Share them with friends and family. Tons of knowledge. And uh, thanks to all of you guys who have made this channel one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube. I have each and every one of you uh, to thank for that. And I'll continue to bring you kick-ass videos in the future. So in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.